Yep. Oh yeah, there's a red light. Uh, okay. Hi everyone, uh, this is a video for the Hall Effect experiment. Uh, so this experiment covers two areas of physics. So it's covering electromagnetism and it's also covering some semiconductor physics. Uh, in this experiment, you're going to be determining two things. One is the charge carrier concentration of the piece of germanium semiconductor uh, that's used in the experiment, which you can see over here. And also the sign of the charge carriers that are inside the germanium, whether they are holes or electrons. Uh, you're going to be doing that by doing three measurements. Um, so you're going to measure the Hall voltage, which allows you to determine the Hall coefficient. And you're measuring that as a function of the magnetic field you apply, the current you apply, and the temperature of the sample. When you're ready, Matt. Okay. Uh, so this is the first piece of equipment uh, used in the experiment. So this is the Tesla meter, which is used to measure the magnetic field. Um, so it comes with this nice protective cover because it's pretty fragile. Uh, so if I just take it off to show you, you can see that this is the field sensor at the end here. Um, and interestingly, it actually uses a Hall probe to measure the magnetic field. Um, so you can see that I've essentially zeroed it here using this knob. So you can see if I, if I move it a little bit, does it change? There we go. So I can zero it. Um, so this is the sensitivity that's normally used. So the full range of two Tesla for the experiment. Um, but you'll notice if I increase the sensitivity, you can see that I can get to the point where it's also sensing the magnetic field of the Earth slightly. You can see it changing as I change the direction. Okay, is that very good. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say something about that the Hall probe is a vector? Uh, oh, yeah, sensor? yeah, yeah. So is that, so, yeah. so, okay, good. Okay, um, the other thing to know about the Hall probe and the Tesla meter uh, is that it is orientation dependent. So it measures a magnetic field with positive going into the direction of this sticker. So in this direction away from you. Um, so obviously if I have it oriented the other way around, it measures the magnetic field in the opposite direction. So it's important to note that for the experiment. Uh, okay, so Matt, how important is the Hall effect to your research? Is it very important or not important at all? Uh, extremely important. Uh, so I actually do semiconductor research um, and as part of that research, something you generally want to know when you get a nice crystal wafer grown and shipped uh, to you from somebody is what is the concentration of the carriers because that will determine a bunch of the electrical properties of the semiconductor system. Um, so I've actually made a bunch of these Hall uh, devices myself um, and a Hall measurement as a function of magnetic field is something I've done hundreds of times. So, yeah. Is there any other way of doing it or you just have to use the Hall measurements? Uh, you can, so uh, I think in the introduction for this experiment actually it talks about the, uh, the quantum Hall effect. So you're doing the classical Hall effect in this experiment. Uh, if you cool your Hall sample down very cold, you actually start to see quantum effects as well. Um, and so you can also use those quantum effects to measure the carrier density and other interesting properties of the system. Nice one. So not a waste of time. Not a waste of time at all. <laughs> okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the actual Hall probe and sample setup. Uh, so you can see this silver looking thing in the middle is your piece of germanium semiconductor that you're going to be measuring. Uh, so there's a couple of contacts on the side of it. So this contact here on the left is the source, which is where your current enters your germanium sample. It flows through in this direction and then exits out here, which is the drain, and then the current is measured after that point there. Um, you can also see your Hall probes. So this one on the top and this one on the bottom are what you're going to use to measure the Hall voltage and work out your Hall coefficient. Uh, and you can see here that this one is labeled top because it's connected to the top of the sample, and this one is the one that's connected to the bottom of the sample. Um, so you can control the current that's entering the sample with this knob here. So you can see if I increase it, the current is displayed on the screen. Uh, and you can also get it to display the temperature of the sample by pushing this button here. And so you can see our sample is about 26 degrees at the moment. And there's also a little indicator light for the heater. Um, you may be able to see there's kind of this big square shadow around the sample. So that is the heating element, the coil, that's going to heat up the sample uh, when you're doing the temperature dependence. Uh, the final thing is this little uh, Hall voltage compensation knob. Uh, I'm going to leave that for now because it'll make more sense when I've actually plugged the multimeter in, which is what we'll do next. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, and so the final thing we actually have here um, is these two uh, voltage probe points 
which you can also plug the multimeter into. Um, this allows you to measure the resistance of the sample or the voltage drop across the sample uh, because we have a constant current source here. So it tries to keep the current running through the sample constant. Uh, and so by measuring the voltage drop, you can work out the resistance of your sample. Okay, away you go. Okay, so now you can see I've plugged a multimeter in to measure the whole resist, uh, sorry, the whole voltage. Um, so I've got my leads connected to my hall probes uh, and you can see I've got zero current and I'm measuring zero voltage. Now, one interesting thing that happens and this is where the voltage compensation knob comes into play is if I now change the current that's running through my sample, you'll notice that I start to see a whole voltage. This is due to misalignment of the hall probes. So they need to be perfectly opposite each other, ideally on your, your piece of semiconductor. Um, if there's some misalignment, you'll then have some resistance in between the two probes and that causes a voltage which varies uh, with the current. And so this is where your compensation knob is useful. So once you've set the current that you want to apply through your sample, you can simply change this compensation knob to try and zero, uh, which clearly is not working very well for this current on this sample. Um, so there you go. So that is one way of um, zeroing the effect from the misalignment of the hall probes. Um, it's probably a good idea to think about too in your experiment if there's a different way you could do this without zeroing it and how much of an effect you expect it to have on your results as well. Okay, so here we have the magnet that's used for the experiment. Uh, so we have two coils here that are wired in series with each other uh, and they have an iron core as well which is used to direct the magnetic field uh, that's produced by the coils. And you can see I've removed part of the core here, which we use to get the sample into and out of the core, uh, and also to see what's going on. Uh, so if I then put the claws back in like this, so you can see the sample is going in the middle here uh, in quite a small gap, and it provides quite a uniform magnetic field to the whole sample. Uh, so some other things to consider with your magnet are why we uh, sorry let's start that again. Do you want to clap? Uh, okay, so some other things to consider with your magnet are why we wire your magnets in series and not in parallel. Um, something else you might want to think about is what would happen if I reverse the polarity of one of the coils or both of the coils. What would you expect to happen to the magnetic field? And what so if I, for example, remove these, what would you expect your magnetic field to look like and what would that do to the uniformity of the field going through your sample? Okay, okay. okay so now I have everything in place. Uh, so this is the setup for a constant current where we're varying the magnetic field and measuring the Hall voltage. Uh, so you can see I have 30 milliamps of current running through the sample. The sample is in the middle of the cores of the magnet and I've inserted the Hall probe so that it is in between the magnet core and the sample itself to measure the field going through it. Go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna show you a couple of data points for the constant current varying magnetic field experiment. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the current that's being applied to the coils which will affect the magnetic field that's induced inside the iron core and then we're going to directly measure the field at the sample using the Tesla meter and so we're just looking at this magnetic field here. Um, so you're going to do 20 millitesla steps uh, and so I'll just show you what that looks like. So first I'll increase the current, oh, got a little too far. So we have 20 millitesla. And so you can see here that the whole voltage that we're measuring across the sample has changed. Uh, and if I further change the magnetic field, so 40 millitesla, we're getting 18.4 millivolts, or minus 18.4 millivolts. And if I go to 60 millitesla, we're getting minus 21.8 millivolts. Uh, and so this is how the measurement is done for a constant current varying the magnetic field. Good. Okay, so now this is the setup uh, for doing the temperature dependence of the Hall voltage. So you can see here I have the magnetic field set to 300 millitesla and I have the current set to 30 milliamps. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is make sure I remove the voltage probe, uh, sorry, the hall probe before I start heating up the sample because the heat can damage the hall probe. Um, so I'm going to take that out, but we already know what the magnetic field is, so that's okay. And there is a little button on the back here that allows me to start heating the sample, and I'm just going to change the display to the temperature. So now we can view the whole voltage that's being measured as a function of the temperature. And I'll turn the heater on and you should see a little heater light come on. And now the sample is going to start heating up. So we can see the temperature is increasing. And as the temperature increases, the whole voltage will change. And what this measurement allows you to find is the, uh, the polarity of your charge carrier. So whether you have n-type or p-type germanium, meaning you have electrons as your majority carrier or holes as your majority carrier.